Uh, and last but not least, our next speaker is Cecilia Garland. She's the co-founder and executive director and tireless worker working for the Bataan Legacy Historical Society. Please give, us a, give her a warm welcome, Cecilia Garland. Thank you so much, everybody. I want to thank the Philippine Consulate, Memorare Manila 1945, our distinguished and honorable guest speakers, our veterans of World War II, of Vietnam, of Korea. I want to thank all of you for coming today. Bataan Legacy Historical Society was founded because of the lack of information on the Filipino defenders of Bataan and Corregidor. They made up seven-eighths of the main line of resistance of the U.S. Army forces in the Far East, and yet today, their story is almost forgotten. But today, we have a small window of opportunity to correct this injustice. As we speak, we are working with the California Department of Education to implement uh, legislation passed in 2011. It's AB 199, which encourages the inclusion of the role of the Filipinos during World War II. However, since 2014, we have expanded the mandate to include World War II in the Philippines to include the stories of our American brothers who fought with their Filipino brothers in the trenches of Bataan and Corregidor. And that's why we have the exhibition today, World War II in the Philippines, the legacy of two nations. This brotherhood was forced in the trenches of Bataan and Corregidor. It continues today in the Philippines and in the United States. And I want to thank Vice Admiral Ray for his unwavering support, not only to Bataan Legacy, but most especially to the Philippine nation. Now, I also want to thank our sponsors, the Joseph and Mercedes McMicking Foundation for enabling us to do our work. In order to teach the lessons of war, the facts must be presented, unvarnished facts and not the Hollywood version. That is the only way we can teach the lessons of war to these young people today who will be the future leaders of this country. Only then will they learn the steep price of freedom we are here today because of the sacrifices of our veterans, of all theaters of war. It continues to this very minute in Iraq, Afghanistan, all over the world, so that we could live in freedom. That is a very steep price to pay, not only by the veterans, but by the families of these veterans. So in order to appreciate it, we must teach the unvarnished facts. Now the curriculum framework is still under approval, it's still being written, and there are still many facts there that need to be corrected. That's why we're still fighting, we're still, lob not lobbying, but working with the Department of Education so that these facts can be corrected. And the rest of the nation is actually looking at California as an example so that this seminal part of World War II history can be taught in the entire United States. I cannot overemphasize the significance of the Battle of Bataan, the one that we're commemorating today. In most history books, it is only remembered as the biggest single surrender in history. What is not known is its bigger significance. Despite fighting without an air force, air support, despite suffering from massive diseases and starvation, you must remember they were already on half rations by January, barely a month after the war started. By the time of the surrender, there was only two days worth of quarter rations. There was not 
the reserves, there were no longer any reserve troops by the time of surrender. So they delayed the timetable of the Imperial Japanese Army. The timetable was 52 days, 50 to 52 days. They fought for 99 days in the peninsula of Bataan. They did this without any air support. So this must be taught. It is not enough that the facts are presented. We must have an historically accurate curriculum that will reflect the perspective of those who were in the war. This must be done. And so I ask for your support. Please tell the Department of Education that we must have an accurate curriculum. And we will also need your support for the monumental task of implementing this in the 87 high school districts in California. As we speak, uh, Ray Cordoba and a team are already starting to develop the curriculum that will reflect an overview, a, 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 a comprehensive overview of the war. And we are trying to include, as I told Colonel Stevens and Chief Johnny Johnson, the Battle of Leyte Gulf. Nobody knows that the Battle of Leyte Gulf, which took place between October 23 to the 26th of 1944, was the biggest naval battle in history. It still is. And it actually crippled the Imperial Japanese Navy. And that was the beginning of the defeat of the Empire of Japan. And so we thank people like Chief Johnny Johnson and Colonel Stevens for participating in these events. And I also want to let you know of another um, project, the Filipino American Veterans Gold Medal. As you know, 70 years ago, the service of the Filipinos who served in the Philippines in the US Army Forces in the Far East was deemed not full time and therefore disqualified them from any of the benefits, the veterans' benefits. Up to now, this has not been reversed. General, Major General Antonio Taguba is working on getting the Veterans Gold Medal for the Filipino veterans, and I ask you to support this. He will be here uh, on April 16, 17, and 18. We are doing a series of events on caregiving and veterans uh, in Daly City, Union City, uh, Vallejo, and Sacramento. So I invite you to these events. Also, we will be having our second annual conference on October 29 in California. And of course, we will be commemorating the 75th anniversary of Pearl Harbor invasion of the Philippines on December 7. So with that, I want to thank you. For the young people in the audience, please read and learn what your ancestors did to contribute to the freedom that we are enjoying today. You don't have to look to Hollywood for your idols. They are there in your family. So with that, I want to thank all of you. Thank you so much. We wouldn't be here today. I want to thank the Bataan Legacy Team, the Philippine Council at Memorare Manila, and all of you. You know that I will not be here standing here today without all of your help. And I want to thank, lastly, my father, who was in the 41st Infantry Regiment and who survived the Bataan Death March. I want to thank my husband, who's been supporting me <laughs> all these years to do this. But thank you so very much. Thank you, Cecilia, for all that you do. She mentioned the students are here. I do want to recognize students from Balboa High School who came here to participate and check out the exhibit. So thank you for being here. Go Balboa Bucks. And I also want to take this opportunity to acknowledge our color guard led by Master Sergeant Lyndon Del, Del Lago, Master Sergeant Stanley Camilla, Regina Carr, excuse me, Regina Carr, Jerry Silva, Jeff Mosler, and Max Lansing. And before we leave for the day, and before they take away the colors, 
I just want to remind you to please, uh, like Cecilia said, please support the Bataan Legacy Historical Society. Make a financial, financial donation so that we can continue our work. Share your family's World War II history and legacy on our guest book located in the back. Loan us any of your World War II artifacts and memorabilia to, uh, to expand our collection. So we're looking forward for you to join us. Maybe you can join us as a steering committee in some of the projects that uh, Cecil talked about and feel free to sign our mailing list. So with that, I think uh, we will conclude the event and uh, please rise for the um, retiring of the colors. Thank you. Okay, one last announcement. The exhibit will be open until the end of this month, April 29. So please tell all your friends to check it out. Share it on your social media, on your Facebook, on your Twitter. Uh, email all your friends. Uh, we want to make sure that everybody knows about the story of the Bataan legacy. So thank you for being with us today. Have a nice day.